Co Farms. Welcome to my homestead kitchen. Uh, this week's video, we are going to be talking every bit counts challenge uh, preservation every single day for the month of August. So, uh, if you're new to this challenge, um, go check out Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead. I'll leave a link down below to her channel. Um, she basically challenges everyone to preserve something every single day for the month of August. It doesn't matter how big or small the project is, but you got to do something every day during that month. So we are taking on this challenge. We've already done our first installment of the challenge. I did a video. I'll leave a link for that here. You can go check that out. It is the first 11 days of the challenge that we have completed so far. Um, so this video, we're going to do our next installment of all the projects that we have been working on. There's a whole bunch of them. They're really good. Some are repeats from last time because we have some of the uh, same veggies and stuff coming in from the garden, but we have purchased a couple things here and there as well that we've been wanting to preserve. So it's been going really well. Um, there are tons of great videos out there. If you, if you haven't checked them out, go to YouTube, put in that hashtag, every bit counts challenge. There's all kinds of videos where other people have um, been participating with the challenge and they are posting their own videos about how they are going about preserving something every day during the month of August. So definitely be sure to go check those videos out. Uh, go check out Jessica at Three Rivers Homestead. Um, it's always uh, great fun watching everybody and seeing what they preserve. And it really builds your momentum for continuing to preserve after the challenge is over because you really see that every bit really, really does add up and make a difference in the end. Um, I can't wait to show you. At the end of the month, I'm going to try to compile everything into one spot. I bet I'm gonna have trouble doing that because there's a lot. Um, probably the only thing that won't come out here is all of the meat that we did um, from our butchering. I'll probably do a little snippet of that and you'll see that, but I'm gonna bring everything else out. I'm gonna put it on the counter and I really wanna see how much we actually did in a month's time. So I think, um, think you would surprise yourself at how much you actually get. So I encourage you guys to participate in the challenge. You don't have to video it. You can just participate, but, um, but it is fun to watch other people um, doing the challenge themselves. So definitely let me know what you're preserving. I wanna hear about it. Leave it in the comments down below and let me know what you guys are working on. But in the meantime, let's move right into all of the footage from the past week, the things that we've been preserving. So here we go. So if you'll remember from our last video, we ended with me putting this bone broth into our freeze dryer. Um, and so this video starts off with me talking about pulling these items back out of our freeze dryer and putting those into jars. So this is our freeze dried bone broth. And our freeze dried eggs. So let's, let me show you the bone broth. You can see it looks like this like styrofoam everything comes out like styrofoam but we're gonna be able to powder this up into this little fine powder and that is gonna be our bone broth powder and we'll be able to do the same thing with these eggs let's just crumble them up into this really fine powder. I don't want to crumble it all up now. I'm going to get it into the jars and then crush it up there. So the freeze dried bone broth we will reuse by just adding water back into it and that will give us bone broth again. And the freeze dried eggs, you use two tablespoons of eggs, two tablespoons of water, and you get a scrambled egg. On this day, I freeze dried some carrots from the grocery store and also some bananas. Uh, we already ate all the bananas, so all we have are the two quarts of carrots. I just foraged this whole basket of chanterelle mushrooms. These are edible mushrooms. They grow wild in our area. And I'm going to get those washed up and then I cut into pieces and we'll put those into the freeze dryer. 
Um, I'm going to start with these, but there are literally thousands of these growing in the woods near our house. So if I wanna go get another batch, I'll go get some more tomorrow. This is probably about five pounds of mushrooms here. We forage these mushrooms, but please be very careful when foraging mushrooms to make sure that you identify them properly uh, before you eat any mushrooms. So into the freeze dryer this morning, we're gonna put three trays of those chanterelle mushrooms and two trays of celery that I got on sale at the grocery store this week. I'm also chopping up some tomatoes and I'm going to be turning that into bruschetta that can be canned. So we ended up with 19 jars of the bruschetta and I'll leave a link below for the recipe that I used for that. We also foraged for elderberries uh, recently near our house. Uh, so I'm just taking all of those off. I'm gonna wash them and we're gonna put those into the dehydrator. And then whenever we need elderberry syrup, we will have uh, dried elderberries to work with. elderberries. It is important to remember though you cannot eat elderberries raw. You have to cook them. So I just took our mushrooms out of the freeze dryer and then also we also had this uh, celery in the freeze dryer as well. So the mushrooms Very interesting. They're good, they're very good. Um, I'm gonna get these put into a jar and we're gonna put them on the shelf. It's probably gonna be about a half a gallon of mushrooms and um, maybe about a quart of celery. So I plan on using this freeze dried celery and mushrooms in uh, soups for the winter time. Um, these are gonna be my soup starters. I have onions, carrots, celery, and mushrooms now, and these are just gonna be used to start all of my wintertime soups and stews. So we ended up with two quarts of celery and almost a whole gallon of mushrooms. So I have a big bowl here of okra from our garden. And we are just going to put the entire whole okra pod onto our freeze dryer tray. I probably do need to snip some of these bigger ends off though. I love okra freeze dried. These are too big. These, this one, nah. Anyway, what I was trying to say is Okra freeze-dried is a really delicious snack. It's crunchy, it still has the seeds inside. I never thought I would like just freeze-dried okra, but it is great. So when it comes out of the freeze-dryer, um, you can spray it with a little bit of oil and then put your favorite seasonings on it, but I just like to add salt. I mean, what, what could be easier than just throwing your whole okra onto a tray and putting it in the freeze dryer? That is so simple and it's delicious. So I am really enjoying the freeze dried okra. We also love fried okra too. And we're going to do some of that fresh, and I may even do a few bags of uh, breaded okra. But for today, I'm gonna put all this in the freeze dryer because I have so much to preserve today. 
um, this will just be the easiest way today to get this stuff taken care of. I still have a lot of okra that's gonna be coming in from our garden for the rest of the season. Uh, so we will just, uh, we will plan on using the other okra in some other different ways. And hopefully we'll get a few bags that we can freeze. It's too big. Yeah, ideally you want your okra to be small when you harvest it. Once it gets, you know, kind of past this size, it starts getting really thick and it's not tender anymore. It becomes really hard and woody feeling and tasting and it's not pleasant to eat. It looks like we're gonna be able to fit all of this okra on just two trays. So then I need to figure out what I'm gonna put on the other trays here. You know what? I think I'll just put half of this, you know, half of these um, cayenne peppers on here too. And then we can powder these up later. But I still have plenty of them over here. Okay, still have another tray empty over here. Let me figure out what we're gonna put on it. I do wanna note that I did cut off the tops of the cayenne peppers before I put them in the freeze dryer, so that way they would freeze dry a little bit easier. So one thing I had in my freezer that I'll go ahead and toss in were these figs uh, that I'd already halved. And we'll just pour those onto the tray. See what will fit. So here are some elderberries uh, that we cleaned up yesterday. We put them in the freezer and um, we're gonna put those in with the okra and the figs and the peppers. Hey friends, let's talk about today's preservation project. Can you guess what it's gonna be? Uh -huh, peppers. Uh oh, uh oh, okay, okay, everything's fine. Everything's fine. I only dropped one pepper on the floor. Okay, so these have not been washed yet, so no worries. They all came from outside. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna be making with all the peppers is a sweet and spicy pepper relish. So it's kind of similar to uh, our cowboy candy that we make, but it's instead of just being jalapenos, it's going to be a mixture of banana peppers, bell peppers, jalapeno peppers. Um, I don't remember what these are called. These are another kind of spicy pepper. These are cayennes. Um, I'm not gonna use all of the cayennes, but I am gonna be mixing in a few of the cayennes with these, all these assorted peppers here. And then we're also going to probably make, uh, either we can dehydrate these uh, peppers or we can turn them into some type of fermented uh, pepper sauce, which is probably what I will do because I like making fermented stuff. So what I'm gonna do is get all these chopped up. I'm gonna put on some gloves because it really, really hurts my hands if I don't wear gloves. Last time I did not wear gloves and my hands were really, really burning and hurting for a couple of days afterwards. So I do not wanna do that to myself again. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get some gloves on and we'll get to chopping all these up. So I had so many peppers that I just did them in two different batches in my food processor and then I mixed them all together um, before I combined them and put them into the vinegar brine.
We ended up with six half pints of our sweet and spicy pepper relish that we can add on to nachos, hot dogs, anything we want. So let's take our stuff out of the freeze dryer. It's been kept really, really cold. You can see the trays are frozen. This is at negative 24 degrees. There is our batch. Ooh, that's cold. It's our batch of cayennes. Let's go get the rest out. So we've got our okra, which is completely dried now. That right there. We've got our cayennes, also completely dried. I don't want to. I don't want to powder those yet. We have more okra. We have figs. When you hear the popping, that's because of the temperature change from the super cold into our warm environment in here. So these are a little bit stuck to the tray. I'm going to have to. Uh, Use a spatula to get some of them up. And we will put, um, we will just put these up and when we get ready to make syrup, we can make syrup with those. So we got um, almost a gallon of okra, a half a gallon of figs, a quart jar of the dried peppers, which we're going to crush into a powder. And then we have one, uh, this is a one and a half pint uh, jar of elderberries. I will not do the elderberries this way again, I don't think. I really don't like the texture of them and they're sort of sticky on the outside because of the way that it pulls the sugar out. And I think I would just prefer to dehydrate them next time. I'm sure that they will still reconstitute well I just don't like the texture of the, the berry. On day 16, we fermented the rest of our assorted peppers. Uh, I just cut the tops off of all of them and then just gave them a cut in half or some of them I just left whole if they were small and we just filled them up into our jar. Fermentation is an easy way to preserve your vegetables by using salt, water, and the natural bacteria and yeasts that are already present on your vegetables to help preserve them. Once the fermentation process is finished, we're gonna be turning these peppers into a delicious hot pepper sauce. I added a few cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of salt, and then I topped it off with filtered water. Now just adding a Mason Tops fermentation weight to keep everything below the brine. And then we'll add a fermentation nipple and a ring. We have an abundance of cherry tomatoes from our garden again, so we're going to ferment those as well. So we're gonna fill these two jars up with all the tomatoes. We're gonna to add salt and filtered water and a few peppercorns, and we're gonna put those on the counter to ferment with our peppers. I'll leave links down below for the fermentation weights and for the fermentation tops that I use. On this day, we had an abundance of tomatoes from our garden again, so we did another batch of that roasted red tomato and pepper salsa. We really love this stuff, so we're just gonna keep making it until we don't have tomatoes anymore. We ended up with six more half pints of the salsa to put onto our pantry shelves for this winter. Here's some of our small harvest on day number 17. Uh, let's see what we can do with some of this harvest today. Today's preservation project, I have this big um, 
bunch of basil from the garden and I'm gonna take all the leaves off and I'm going to put them in the freeze dryer. So I'm just making sure to pull off all of the leaves and leaving the stems and the flowers behind. And then I'm washing it really thoroughly before placing it onto our freeze dryer trays. We went and foraged another big batch of mushrooms from the woods near our house. Uh, so we're gonna get to chopping these up and we're gonna add those to our freeze dryer trays as well. So we're gonna put a tray of carrots that I got from the grocery store. We've got two trays of chanterelle mushrooms that we foraged, and we have two trays of the basil from the garden outside. We're gonna put those into the freeze dryer. So the next day we took our batch of um, mushrooms, carrots, and basil out of the freeze dryer, and let's get it put into our jars. Uh, we've got two quarts of mushrooms, one pint of basil, and one quart of carrots. This is another thing to add to the pantry shelf. So we immediately fill our trays for the freeze dryer up again. I have these peppers that we had in the freezer from last year and they were starting to get a little bit freezer burnt. So we just went ahead and filled all of our trays up and put them into the freeze dryer and we will see how they turn out uh, tomorrow. We took our peppers out of the freeze dryer this morning and we ended up with five quarts to add to the pantry shelf. Uh, we can use these for fajitas, tacos, or pasta dishes. All right guys, that wraps up this second installment of the Every Bit Counts Challenge for August. Let's talk about everything that we made during these 10 days. Uh, so we were able to put up a half a gallon of freeze dried bone broth powder, uh, one and a half quarts of powdered eggs, three quarts of shredded carrots, 19 half pints of bruschetta, one quart of elderberries, one and a half gallons of mushrooms, two quarts of celery, six half pints of sweet and spicy pepper relish, one gallon of okra, a half a gallon of figs, one quart of cayenne peppers, one gallon of fermented cherry tomatoes, a quart of fermented spicy peppers, six half pints of salsa, uh, one pint of basil, and five quarts of freeze-dried bell peppers. Wow. <laughs> if, if you would have told me I would be preserving that much food in such a short amount of time, I would have never believed you. And that is just for the 10 days. Um, what about what we did before that? And what about what we're gonna do for the next 10 days? I'm really excited for this challenge, guys. And you should be too. You should really, really try participating in this challenge. Even if you're not doing it right now during August, try it in September or shoot for doing it next year because it's a really fun challenge and it really lets you see how much you can actually get done in just a short time frame. So just do a little something every single day and it'll really help you work towards your end goal. So I hope this provided you a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of inspiration today. I hope you will stick around for some future videos. Uh, please hit that subscribe button right there. Um, that'll notify you for any future videos that we um, have put out. And then check out this video right here that YouTube thinks you're gonna enjoy. And then I'm gonna link a playlist right here that I think you'll enjoy. So see you next time guys here at Rowan Co Farms.